Hey everyone, welcome back to NeuroPsyQ, the best place to increase your neuroscience IQ. Today I'm here with Phidias Diamandis to discuss why we chose neuroscience. So sit tight, stay tuned, let's roll the intro. Okay, as I said earlier, today we are going to be talking about why we chose neuroscience. But first, let's just introduce ourselves. Um, a lot of people have been asking my credentials. And so my name is Christina Balcanis. And I just recently graduated from the University of Toronto, specialist in neuroscience program. And now I am pursuing additional research as I figure out the next steps in my career. I'm joined today by Dr. Diamandis, who will introduce himself to you as well. Yeah, so thanks for joining us today and um, over the over our kind of weekly episodes. Um, my name is Fidias, I'm, um, uh, I'm a medical doctor. I trained at the University of Toronto uh, for MD PhD studies and then uh, did, did a um, residency training in neuropathology uh, uh, where I studied to um, understand how we diagnose uh, different diseases uh, by looking at tissue under the microscope. Uh, I also run a research lab focused on uh, neurosciences, uh, neuro-oncology, and uh, the use of technologies like artificial intelligence to help us uh, make um, uh, better, faster, and more efficient decisions. So, uh, yeah. Um, uh, interesting. We both have some uh, background in this area, so, um, but different stages of our career. So I think it'll be interesting to see uh, our different perspectives of why we chose uh, paths in, in this uh, in this neuroscience field. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is why we should subspecialize in the first place. So why would you choose neuroscience instead of just being a generalist and all the sciences. What's your take on that? You know, what, what I've noticed um, kind of going through uh, training and uh, in life in general, I guess, is that um, uh, I guess a good analogy is that, you know, you wouldn't go to your barber um, to um, for, for, for pastries and you wouldn't want your baker cutting your hair. We live in a kind of era where subspecialization is uh, celebrated in all aspects of life. Um, and I think really, um, uh, for all our tasks in life, we go to the uh, expert where they have, um, they're devoting their hours of expertise into a one specific field. So when you ask someone for advice or their insights, uh, you get a very kind of high, um, uh, you know, high level understanding of the uh, kind of intricacies and sophistications of that specific field. So I think, um, uh, you know, as someone kind of further along in my career, I, I, I really um, recommend that whatever you do in life, um, uh, you focus and subspecialize on something, whether it be a hobby, whether it be uh, whatever you do for a pro your professional life. Um, uh, the real excitement and, and value is added when you can do something, whatever that thing is, better than, uh, you know, 95 or 99 percent of people in, in, our, in our society. So that's why I think. Uh, uh, specialization is, is really important, even uh, uh, in something as specialized as science. Yeah, for sure. And as somebody fresh out of undergrad, what you start to realize when you're doing your undergrad is in the early years, like in first year and second year, you're just looking at the general things. Um, you cover biology, chemistry, physics, but then by your third year, once you've accumulated all this basic knowledge, you start to get to kind of the edge of science where you're reading research papers as discoveries are being made and you have to start thinking critically. And so I think one of the important things about subspecialization too is that if you were just trying to be a generalist, you wouldn't be able to keep on top of all the science as it comes. So I think that's yeah, a that's a very good point. Yeah, I think that's um, uh, that's your wise uh, beyond your years. So uh, <laughs> I guess hopefully that you know hopefully that's a good intro um, into why you should subspecialize. Now, um, 
you know, let's cover some of the reasons that uh, perhaps um, we both got excited about neurosciences. So uh, people that are kind of still um, kind of agnostic to what they want to um, uh, focus in their careers, uh, get a sense of some of the exciting areas of neurosciences. So um, yeah, why would someone want to study neurosciences? I chose neuroscience because it was the thing that I knew the least about. And I know that might seem like contradictory. Why would you want to do something that you don't know a lot about? But we didn't cover it a lot in high school or anything like that. And I was always interested about the brain and the brief material that we covered on the nervous system really intrigued me and like disorders of the nervous system, mental health. So I was like, okay, this is my opportunity to get into the field and actually learn more about something that I'm curious about. Yeah, that's that's really interesting because you know I had the same feeling um, uh, when when I kind of decided to really focus on neurosciences. I actually tried to avoid neurosciences because I thought it was going to be super super complicated and kind of beyond what my capabilities were. Um, and I and I was introduced to it actually in a funny way. I when I was choosing my PhD supervisor, um, uh, who was uh, uh, Professor Peter Dirks, um, you know, I never really had too much of an interest in neuroscience, even though he was a neurosurgeon and ran a neuro-oncology lab. And uh, I was actually trying to avoid anything in the neurosciences because of its kind of perceived complexity. Um, but I, I was drawn to him. Um, um, he was such a nice person, so I, I couldn't say no and and, and, and pursue something else. So I, I, I kind of joined his lab just because of, of, of how uh, nice of a person he was. And, and I was kind of introduced to it in a kind of, um, uh, I guess, in a passive way through, um, through my PhD research on, on brain tumors. And so, um, yeah, I think, um, I think obviously as you, as I, um, um, as I learn more and more about it, um, definitely i think um you start to appreciate that um how important our brain is um and how special it is as an organ compared to other organs um and, and how many um different aspects of life it touches not just about uh controlling our diaphragm and controlling our breathing and heart rate um it has very special functions that i think are unique to other organs so uh, definitely how we learn how we perceive the world around us um I think that's um, what I realized after I had to remain in this field um, is because um, really a lot of the questions, um, uh, you know, left uh, in society really revolve around us understanding how the brain perceives um, the world around us. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, um, um, you know, I, it, 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 I think uh, it, it does have this perception that it's very, very complex and, uh, uh, it seems like anything where you add the word neuro in front of, you know, neuroscientist, neuroscience, neurosurgeon, uh, it gets a bit of a, a, um, a boost in terms of sophistication. But um, it, it is a science. It is, a, it is something that you can learn from first principles. So definitely not something you should uh, shy away from if, uh, if you're considering it. Yes, I think it, it's really interesting that you said the, the intimidation factor too, because I didn't think about that too much when I chose it as my um, specialization for undergrad. I just looked at the courses and I'm a little indecisive sometimes. So I saw like, oh, okay, I still get to take chemistry. I still get to take biology, psychology. And then I have these like neuroscience courses on top of that. But then later when I started to tell people, yeah, I'm specializing in neuroscience, then I got the sense by their reactions that they were like, oh, whoa, neuroscience, really? So I think it is intimidating to some people, but it's also, as you were saying, so vast, like there's all these niches, there's um, ways to use it in marketing now with artificial intelligence too. And then we have, everyone talks about Elon Musk and the neurotechnology. Um, it's important for behavior and negotiation as well, but with all these different niches, um, where do you think the future of neuroscience is heading? Yeah, so I think that's um, I think that's a really good reason to go into it because um, I do think that um, you know a lot of the our, our, a lot of our biological understanding of, of our the human body has 
now been uh, relatively uh, well mapped. Um, so I think um, I, I think the advantage that neuroscience brings to the table uh, for those in it is understanding not just how the brain functions at a kind of biological level, but um, you know now understanding that um, there's uh, a lot of psychological aspects and you know there's uh, certain neurotransmitters that make us more interested in certain things about life than others i think these are fundamental concepts as you said that are now permeate uh, permeating into things like marketing um you know a lot of our modern artificial intelligence systems like neural networks um are are, are, are inspired by how the brain uh, is is wired and connected and makes decisions. So uh, I can I can I can see there being jobs for people who understand how certain circuits in the brain work and why they work so well. Um, uh, you know I can see them being um, vital players in um, you know furthering our, our 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 kind of machine learning and artificial intelligence technologies to that next level. Um, I, I think that's going to be uh, an important theme that we see. How can we mimic the brain? You know, when we think about things like the Industrial Revolution, we've tried to mimic, um, you know, uh, human strength using machines. And I think now we're in this kind of almost intellectual revolution where we're trying to scale human thought by creating computers and algorithms that at least uh, can replicate some of the tasks that we're able to do. So I think I think people who understand the brain are um, in a unique position to help guide that um, a kind of um, transition from um, biological networks to these artificial networks that um, you know uh, have tremendous uh, um, an, a tremendous role in, in kind of our future society, um, and that goes the same. I think you mentioned Elon Musk. I think that's a good example uh, with his Neuralink and trying to create a um, a brain computer interface. Um, I know when I was starting, I, I was. Uh, um, uh, thinking about uh, this field and, you know, where's the future going? You know, you think about things like uh, regenerative neuromedicine. How how can we get someone to walk or um, uh, carry out functions like uh, uh, reply to an email when uh, they may be paralyzed below the neck? And, you know, these uh, you see some of these videos about brain machine interfaces where uh, people can think and 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 write words on a on a screen. It's uh, very remarkable, you know, uh, what this um, what this field has. I think um, that's really really exciting. And understanding what aspects of the brain do certain tasks, um, you know, that's something that maybe computer scientists may may, may not be as familiar with. And I think there's going to be a lot of collaboration between computer scientists and neuroscientists to uh, figure out how to best merge um, the machines and, 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 and our brains together in the most efficient ways. Yeah, I was just going to say the exact same thing about collaboration because I was, I just wanted to say like, you don't need to get intimidated by the fact that this is where it seems like neuroscience is headed and you don't need to feel like you need to know all the science and then know how to computer program as well because that's where collaboration comes into play and um, if we work as a team and share our specialized knowledge, then we can do uh, better things and we could do, we could make more progress in that way. Um, but aside from that, what is something that you learned after getting into the field that surprised you? Were you surprised by these sort of collaborations maybe between neuroscience and computer sciences? No, I, I think, you know, I, I think these, um, these, these collaborations are going to only increase. And, you know, even if you don't study neuroscience, um, you know, um, um, we're moving to a society where most of the innovations are now at the interface between disciplines, um, whether it be computer, computer science and neuroscience, um, uh, you know, most people, um, are, as you said, are getting to a point where um, specialization in one thing alone may not be enough to innovate. Um, and so collaboration is key. And I think um, even if you have um, the opportunity to do a psychology course or um, a behavioral course, these are these may sound um, 
you know, insufficient on their own uh, um, for, um, uh, you know, for specialization, but just understanding how to communicate um, between disciplines is, is really, really important. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I think that's, um, you know, that's really the, the future uh, uh, of society is uh, collaborations, as you said, uh, not just between neuroscientists and everyone else, but um, definitely between experts. Um, so whatever field you go into, um, having, um, um, you know, having the skills to, um, to communicate your, um, um, your craft with, with someone else um, is, is a very, very important skill. Uh, you, know, you, know, you know, our group, we have computer scientists that know very little about medicine and we have, um, uh, you know, clinical trainees that uh, know um, medical knowledge that very few people in this world know, but, um, you know, we're not trained uh, to, to code uh, even basic uh, algorithms. And, and, and it's really um, the, the teams that excel in, uh, that I've seen is uh, the teams that are able to, uh, for those two different types of experts to interact and, and, and explain their specific uh, area of knowledge uh, to the other. Um, yeah, so um, another, another important question I think we should uh, cover is um, uh, everyone's worried about um, will my profession exist in 10 years? Um, you know, is it something that's already been figured out? Is it something that's already been automated? What, what aspects of neuroscience um, do, do you feel confident that, you know, even though you're uh, relatively early in your career, have the staying power of a, of a kind of a good career path? I think for sure there's the aspect of regeneration and repair as a career path to go down, even with neurotechnology and brain computer interfaces now trying to um, help people recover from paralysis or for strokes um, using these regenerative methods. There's a hundred percent job opportunities that will exist in that area, but also mental health is on the rise. And with like all the destigmatization of mental health, people need to get into that field more and help find ways that we can deal with the crisis and better treat people who are struggling with mental health and mental illness. Um, but yeah, I think, I think those fields will exist. And then if you get into neuroscience, there's so many different niches that you might find that you fall into something that you didn't even know existed as you progress through your career. Yeah, no, I think those are really good examples uh, of, of, of future job prospects. Um, um, also neurodegenerative diseases, I think uh, are gonna be a huge, um, healthcare um, challenge in the future that will need uh, a lot of bright minds to address. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of amazing innovations in cancer with immunotherapy. Um, uh, there's a lot of um, new therapies for people with heart disease, you know, these number one and number two killers uh, 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 of humans in the last uh, uh, many decades. But as we live longer, because we're not uh, being um, uh, struck by these um, uh, diseases, uh, the opportunity for our brain to degenerate. Um, um, I think a lot of people are worried uh, of the uh, of the kind of explosion of uh, of people with uh, Alzheimer's and neurocognitive decline and Parkinson's disease and many other kind of neurodegenerative disorders. So I think there's a huge opportunity, whether it be as you said, um, providing uh, psychological support and um, safety for the, for these patients, um, ways to improve their cognition, whether it be biological or neurotechnological um, uh, innovations. I think there's um, a lot of promise and a lot of things that we don't know yet uh, that requires, um, uh, that's gonna require bright minds to, um, to fill in the gaps. So I think it is um, uh, a career with a lot of staying power. Um, okay, why don't we uh, end it there, but, uh, Quick disclaimer, um, you know, we're very, very biased people. Um, you know, I've spent over 15, 20 years studying um, uh, to become a very subspecialized uh, neuropathologist. Christina's obviously um, um, 
uh, spent her undergrad studying uh, neuroscience topics. So uh, it, um, what we may say may be extremely biased. There's a lot of other uh, exciting um, areas of science and medicine and, and, and society that are probably equally as um, uh, have an equally of bright future, whether it be engineering. Uh, we saw this year, anything in the pandemic, uh, if you're in immunology and if you're in um, anything uh, with healthcare policy, have very, very bright futures, um, renewable energy, space travel, uh, the list goes on. So don't feel like this is uh, um, uh, the only uh, exciting area of life. We're biased, uh, but hopefully at least you got a view into our biased uh, insights and hopefully it helps you uh, uh, make the next uh, career uh, move in your life, whether you're our undergraduate student or whether you're someone uh, um, uh, further along that's looking to switch their careers and uh, try something different. Yeah, I agree. Thanks for watching everybody. If you have any comments you'd like to make, leave them down below. Any questions for us, you could leave them down below as well. Maybe answer for us, if you're in neuroscience, why did you choose neuroscience? But that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next time on NeuroSciQ.